claim to be the creator, but I'm a savior. I take the strange parables of human life and make something out of a crazy quilt that saves hundreds of lives. Happy Sunday fun day everybody. Welcome to another digital release review. As always, I gotta warn you there are mild spoilers for this type of video. Um, today I am reviewing The Iron Claw, a movie based on the legendary wrestling family from Texas, the Von Erics. It stars Zac Efron, who portrays the last surviving Von Erich brother, Kevin. Lily James plays his wife. Uh, Jeremy Allen White will play Harry Von Erich. Harris Dickinson plays David Von Erich and Stanley Simmons plays Mike Von Erich. Now I am a huge professional wrestling fan and I am from Texas so I am very very well familiar with the Von Erich story and their legacy. Um, let me start by saying this is a very very sad movie. It deals with basically family and brotherly love. Uh, Zac Efron is amazing in this. Uh, he really really shows how mature and how evolved he's gotten with his acting skills uh he looks way different than he's ever has in ever uh his face definitely looks different that's supposedly due to some kind of accident he had at home and he had to have his chin reconstructed but he definitely does not resemble the zach efron i remember from back in his younger days uh that's not to take away from his acting or anything like that uh he's great in this so is lily uh, Lily James is great in this, playing his wife. Uh, let's start off with Kevin Von Erich. Um, most of the movie deals with the perspective from, from him. It's like he's telling the story, and obviously he would be telling the story because he is the last surviving Von Erich brother. Uh, the movie does kind of rush through a lot of the brothers' deaths, but they do cover them. David, who died overseas in Japan from an inflammation to his small intestine from an injury he got during an wrestling match although many wrestlers will say that when they were on tour at that time that it was a drug overdose a few of the wrestlers went into the room and took the drugs so that you know the coronary people wouldn't be able to find them of course that's mostly speculation and rumors he said she said uh, no there's no video or pictures or anything like that but they didn't mention anything of that sort they just said it was a, a you know from an injury that he sustained in, while in Japan uh, then we have Mike's death who follows and uh you know he actually deals with a, a shoulder injury and he had to go through surgery and there was complications with the surgery and unfortunately the complications left him partially brain dead and unable to function like he normally used to and unfortunately he starts dealing with depression and he overdoses on tranquilizers uh, then the most famous brother of all is Harry von eric uh the texas tornado who is the only one that made it to the wwf at that time and got to be intercontinental champion um they do show him losing his leg in a motorcycle accident and being amputated and dealing with the stress and depression of, of hiding his injury and uh, the pain of wrestling without a foot and not letting anybody know uh, and unfortunately as we most of us who know the von erics know he ends up shooting himself in the heart in the front yard of their house with his dad revolver that he gave him for christmas uh, uh, yeah, there is one brother that is not mentioned, their youngest, Chris, who also, like Harry, shot himself from dealing with depression. Uh, I'm guessing probably the producers or maybe even Kevin himself thought that there was just, you know, too much gunshot suicides in the movie and, and they decided to just omit it all together. But I do find it kind of odd that they don't even mention Chris at all in the movie. Um, I don't know the reasoning for that but like i said it's a very tough movie and i imagine it was a very tough movie for kevin uh you know to be supervising and and and, and being there and helping them produce this movie it must have been really hard for him to, to watch these actors portray his brothers um so i understand partially why some some of the stuff factual stuff was uh omitted uh zach is impressive in this all the actors are impressive in this uh they all went through tremendous body transformations as big as they could get each of them obviously uh jeremy allen white was supposed to portray the biggest von eric harry von eric and of course in this movie he's he's kind of the shortest guy um so but to be all honest 
There was no way in hell you were ever going to cast the perfect people to be the Bonnie Arches. Those guys just looked amazing, all of them. And, and there's no Hollywood actor that could have come close to even looking close to what they look like. So, you know, kudos to these guys for getting in shape and, and, and learning, you know, the, the rings of the ropes and, and the trade to do this fucking movie. I, I really, really admire them all for doing that. Uh, there is another actor who I've yet to mention, and that's Holt McCallney. He plays their father, Fritz Von Erich. He is by far the best actor in this freaking movie. And to me, I, I think he is probably the only person in this movie that actually resembles and looks like Fritz. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, they got good actors, great acting in this. Um, the movie really focuses on the old Von Erich curse. Kind of stating that the family has been cursed since the first baby brother they do they do mention jack jr which is a, a the first brother that died when he was young uh, i think believe he died from drowning or accidental electrocution i, I don't quite remember uh but us wrestling fans we kind of know that this supposed curse comes from uh fritz von eric when he adopted the actual von eric name to play a heel character a nazi heel character and and there's an old legend about some Jewish woman in the audience who cursed uh, Fritz after a match because you know she had gone through the Holocaust and whatnot and cursed this man for pretending to be a Nazi and that's what the real curse is but this movie doesn't go into that it just kind of says you know the first baby brother died and and that's the curse uh, so I feel like a lot of the partying and drug and alcohol use was showcased very minimal and uh and made their deaths relate more about this supposed curse than the real life issues that they actually had uh i think a carrie von eric movie would have been amazing and a more impactful movie because of everything that he went through uh but i get it uh kevin's the last surviving one and he wanted to honor all his brothers because he loves his brothers that's what this movie is it's about brotherly love it's about the oldest brother wanting to take care of all his his younger brothers um it's a very reserved movie as far as it, it doesn't really get into the nitty-gritty ugly details of the von erics uh but i think it does a good job in honoring you know the family legacy and whatnot um final verdict i think this is a great fucking movie it's very sad and it's very tragic and yeah it could have been better it rushes through the brother's death too quickly. Like I mentioned, it doesn't show a lot of the drug use, a lot of the womanizing, a lot of the issues they, they had from fame and, and, and being wrestlers on the road. Um, it just stays really respectful to the family and to the, the tragic, you know, the, the tragedy of it. Um, I'm happy with it. I really am. I'm happy that they finally did a Von Eric movie. I highly recommend this. It's, it's very, very good. The acting is superb by everybody um very very surprised that this went um uh, didn't receive any nominations as far as the academy goes zach efron's at the very least should have gotten some kind of nomination out there but you know i think this is a very underrated movie and i i, I really 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 recommend it um i hope you guys have a good sunday fun day stay safe out there uh, don't miss the live broadcast every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. where I discuss the week's celebrity and comic book nerd news. Um, and until then, I'll just catch you next time. Peace.